All right, Rabbi Osai, good morning, good morning, Hashem, to be able to begin a new daf together today. Beginning by thanking all of our sponsors to thank our Talmud Torah sponsors for the month of Menachim Av. Sponsorship is from the Tilson and Wall families sending their love from Eretz Yisrael with a simple message to the rest of us here in America and Baltimore. Come join us soon. A beautiful, beautiful dedication, a beautiful message. A week of learning sponsors, Ingrid Fishman and Lynn Caesar, in memory of their mother, Charlotte Gavantman, Zichron Levracha, and their sister, Judith Gavantman, on their respective yard sites. We hope that in the merit of our Talmud Torah, the Neshama Slavin Aliyah, and the families, Eina Chama. Our Dafyomi sponsor today, Reb Kamen Akiva Kovacs, wishing a Mazel Tov to the Lom De Mishnah Yomi on completing Seder Nashim and starting Seder Nezikin tomorrow. May our learning of Nezikin in Daf and Mishnah, and Mishnah Yomi protect Am Yisrael from all Nezik, from all harm. An incredible, our main Mazel Tov on the incredible accomplishment in the Hevra again. A big plug for Mishnah. First of all, Kamal Akiva does a wonderful job every day recording this year. And also, even for those who are not learning Mishnah Yomi, to pick up a Nezikin is a wonderful, wonderful Chazara for Baba Kama, Baba Metzia, Baba Basra. And then again, this will really keep up with a lot of what we're doing in Daf Yomi. Just a wonderful way to Chazar and to reinforce. So tremendous Mazel Tov to this entire Chavra. And how that we should all be Hashem to continued growth in our learning. Well, so with that, let us begin. Today's Daf is Mem Gimel, 43. Th- sorry, 33. We are picking up, in, no, 43. We are picking up in Meretz Hashem on Membez, Membez 42B, and we are picking up at Gufa, which is two, four, six lines up from the bottom. Gufa, Amr Shmuel, Shutov Kiori Bershus Domi. So Shmuel said that a Shutov, a partner, is like someone who has permission to be in the field, which Rabbo says we've established yesterday, means that a Shutov cannot go ahead and establish Chazaka. Remember again, one of the interesting things that we came out with from yesterday is that is that a shutov? In order to establish chazaka, there has to be a there has to it has to be that the only reason you're there is because you're the owner. If there's some other plausible reason why you are in that field, then you can't establish chazaka. So, for example, I always think like the paradigmatic example of this is a sharecropper, right? So remember again, if I have a sharecropper, right? Ruvain's my sharecropper, and now Ruvain's been in the field for three years, and I didn't say anything to him. So Ruvain can say, oh, you see, I'm the owner, I have chazaka, because I was there uncontested for three years. Yeah, you are there uncontested. That's because you, you're my employee. You're, you're, you're my job. You're, you're working for me. So, so Shmuel says the same idea applies to a shutoff, right? That ultimately, again, that a shutoff, a, a partner of mine. So if I'm, I'm, I'm partners with Ruben in the field. So Ruben's in the field for three years uncontested. Ruben can't claim Chazaka because as a shutoff, as a partner, it makes sense that he's there. To which the Gemara says, "My kamash malon shutfas in lo chazaka." So, what, what what is Shmuel coming to teach us? That a shutaf can't establish chazaka on his fellow partner's property. Leima shutaf in lo chazaka. So, just say it. Just say it. In other words, what, what do you? What, why why are you phrasing it as shutaf kiyori bishos? Right, that a shutaf is like someone who's going ahead and coming down with with permission. Why don't you just say that shutaf doesn't have chazaka? Something with YouTube, I wasn't sure exactly. It's, it's recording on the. So, so ultimately, again, so he says the, says the following that ultimately, again, someone who goes ahead, so a shutoff, a shutoff, lo mar shenoto b'sheva chamagiel k'sefayim. Once we've had this expression before, sheva chamagiel k'sefayim means that ultimately, again, fully, fully mature produce. That a shutoff, a shutoff, although he can't establish chazaka, 
what he does get to do is share in all of the fully mature produce of the field. So both sides. Remember again, we spoke about this idea that in the event that someone fails to go ahead and, and meet the criteria of Chazaka, right? Let's say it turns out Ruben's living in my field for three years, right? And then it goes, and then he, I, he claims Chazaka, I claim you're a squatter. It turns out he can't produce proof, whatever, whatever the reason is. So the halach is he has to vacate the field. Not only does he have to vacate the field, what else does he have to do? What else do he, he has to pay back any produce that he's consumed. In other words, he's been illegally living on my field for three years, and he's been consuming my produce illegally. See, he's got to get off, he's got to vacate, and he also has to pay back. The difference with Shutov is that, remember, that's what? That Halacha Lamaisa, that a Shutov doesn't have to go ahead and a Shutov doesn't have, a Shutov can't establish Chazaka, so he's got to vacate, but he does have the right to share in all of the produce for all of those years, right? In other words, he doesn't have to pay me back, or he may have to pay me back some portion, maybe if he was consuming my portion, but anything that, technically speaking, would have fallen under his partnership portion, he is permitted to keep. Incredible. Whether that's a field that is normally planted, a field that's not normally planted, halacha lemaisa, he is permitted to go ahead and keep produce. Incredible. So I will say, just by the way, so bottom line, just so you understand the sugi, it's one of these beautiful sugis that seems to close out with a pretty clear resolution, which is a shutaf can't establish chazaka. Right, a partner, and this really goes in line with the lot with the with the list of the Mishnah, that a shutaf is part of that group of people. Omnin, Arisin, Apetropin, people who have a reason to be in the field, therefore can't or and the property can't go ahead and establish Chazaka. All right, incredible. Let's go back to Umi Eden Zalza. So we're gonna say now in in the whole Shutfus discussion, so we're talking about this idea that Shutfin also have the ability to go ahead and testify for each other. Now this is very interesting, right? So let's say again, I'm a partner, Ruben and Shimon are partners, so now let's say Shimon's portion is being contested. So Ruvain has the ability to go ahead and testify on his behalf. So the Gemara says, really? Type of Mem Gimel 43a? Am I? Nogin Be'edus Anhein. They both say, isn't this called being Nogia Be'edus? Now Nogin Be'edus, and Rashi says over here, now Nogin Be'edus, and just, I guess the way we would go ahead and, and translate this in a good English way is conflict of interest. Conflict of interest, or um, yeah, conflict of interest. That how can you believe Ruvain to testify about Shimon? After all, again, Ruvain has a vested interest or a conflict of interest. Look at Rashi or the Rashbam. No gebe dusan. The chol zman shelo chilku legamre emito shum maarer klumin asada yafsidu shneihem v'nimtza de la atzmo meid. See, I say here's the issue. If Ruvain and Shimon have any partnership debt. Ruvain and partnership debt, then if a creditor comes against Ruvain and Shimon, right, so the good news is partnership property, partnership property will be used to satisfy that debt. If there's no partnership property, it could be that they're going to be separately liable. So therefore, Ruvain wants Shimon to have this property, right? Why? Because as long as Shimon, the partner, remains vested in this property, then will partnership debt, partnership debt can be collected from jointly owned property. If one of the partners were to lose this property, then halacha lemaisa, again, it could put the other pro partner out. So the idea over here is how can you say that Ruven has the ability to go out and testify for Shimon, because after all, you know, both say, you know, edos, you know, the, the halachos of witnesses, right? Halachos edos one or one is that you can't testify about something if you have a vested interest in the testimony. You have to be somewhat impartial. But over here, he's not going to be impartial. To which the Gemara says, "Oh, I'm ask, you know, what's the case over? This is fascinating." The of lay din u dvarim eni al sadazu. Oh, you're right. And the Gemara says normally one partner can't testify another for another partner. I said, so what's the case over here, where Ruvain writes to Shimon, din u dvarim eni al sadazu. I have nothing to do with this field. Now, the pastors, what that sounds like? What's happening over here? What's happening over here? That Ruvain is removing himself from the field. He has no ownership interest in the field. He's essentially yielding everything to to Shimon, and therefore, therefore, Ruvain doesn't have a conflict. Ruvain is not vested. Ruvain is not involved. Din u Therefore, he could give testimony on behalf of Shimon. I the Gemara says one second. The chikas of la myhavi. So one second. If somebody writes dinu dvarim imli al sadazu, right? Someone, someone. Imagine. Just, just let's play this out. You have two people in partnership together, and Ruvain, one of the partners, says to the other partner, "You know what? I'm out. 
I'm out. Dinu Dvarim Ainli Al Sadazu. I'm not, not involved in this. I, I have nothing to do with this field anymore. Now it sounds like I want to say, what is Dinu Dvarim? What does it sound like? What does it sound like? Hefker. Right? It sounds like, so it sounds like, like he's making his portion Hefker. So the Gemara says, by the way, by the way, Havatanya Haomer the Chaveru Dinu Dvarim Al Sadazu Ve Ainli Eisik Ba Fiyade Misulak Es Hemena Lo Amar Klum. He'll say, if you're in a partnership, if you're in a partnership and you decide to go ahead and remove yourself by, from the partnership by simply saying to your friend, I have nothing to do with this anymore. I have no involvement in it. My hands are removed from it. So that is a meaningless statement. That is a meaningless statement. Lo Amar Klum. Now we'll say, now what's the logic about that? Look at the Rashbam for just a moment. So I'll say, this is incredible. When you own something, in order to, or you're in a partnership, in order to divest yourself of that partnership, there has to be a manner or, or, or a mechanism of conference. In other words, you can get out of a partnership by gifting your portion to your partner, by selling your portion to your partner, but just saying, you know, you know, kind of like, like, ta-da, I'm out, you know, just like, so, so it's interesting, the Rashbam says, when someone says something like that, that sounds more like an anticipatory wish, right? I wish I was out of this partnership. I wish I was out of this business. But without a formal conveyance, without a formal conveyance, you can't go ahead and get yourself out of this. It's so fascinating. He says, I'm sorry. So we'll say, so again, Rashbam goes on. The Rashbam says, I'll tell you where this does work, right? Where does this lashon of ainly asek, right? Ainly asadazu, ainly asek ba, where does it work? If somebody wants to give you something and you don't want to receive it, then halach alamai said this type of lashon of I don't want anything to do with it prevents you from acquiring it. But once you have already acquired something, once you own something, if you want to go ahead and remove ownership, there has to be a formal mechanism of conference and conveyance, whether that's a gift, right? Whether that's, whether that's a sale, but just saying, you know, I'm not involved in this field anymore. Ainli Asik Ba Yada Misulekes Himeno, Rashman says that's like you yearning for freedom, right? I wish I, I wish I wasn't involved in this. I would say there's a tremendous Moser Haskell in this as well, which is that when you have an issue in life, when you have an issue in life, just simply wishing your issues away, right, doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? Once you, once, once the, in other words, it could be that, there's, that there, there, there is a science and perhaps a, a mandate to try to live life in a prospective, forward-thinking way so that I don't get myself into bad situations. There's definitely something to that. But once you are saddled with an issue, all too often in life, we just wish our problems away. Or we just don't think, it's not, not my problem, not my problem. Well, if, if, if it's a life situation that you're already in, then it is your problem. And wishing it away, or just even simply davening for it to go away, is not enough. A person has to take formal action, dynamic activity, in order to address whatever their life issues are. Because we all know, especially as we get older, the more you don't pay attention to your life problems, the bigger and the scarier they get. Saying, I'm not going to deal with it, or saying it's not my problem, or just anticipatorily wishing it away, only makes it worse. Only makes it worse. Once the problem is here, the only way to deal with it is to actively engage it and employ a formal mechanism of resolution. Incredible idea. So the Gemara says, the point over here is it, does, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So we're saying over here, Reuven was Shimon's partner. Now Reuven wants to partner, no, Reuven wants to testify on Shimon's behalf, but he can't because he's in Ogea Badavar, right? He has a conflict of interest. No problem. He just says, I'm no longer a partner in this field. So he, he confers, he, right? Essentially, it sounds like he's saying, he's trying to say he gives over his ownership and interest to Shimon, and therefore he could testify on Shimon's behalf. The says, but that doesn't work. How come I ask? You know, what's the case over here? B'Shekhan Miyado. Oh, a Kenyan. A Kenyan. Okay. So now we're talking. In other words, so if Reuven says to Shimon, Shimon, listen, I'm out. I'm out, right? Yada Misalaka Semeno. I'm out. I'm not, I'm not a part of this field anymore. I'm giving it over to you. And they do a Kenyan. 
They do let's say a Kenyan Khalipin, right? They do some a Kenyan Sudr, they do a they do a Kenyan and and through the Kenyan Ruvain goes ahead and conveys his portion of the field to Shimon. Now we're talking. That that could work. And if indeed Ruvain removes himself from the partnership of the field. So now essentially Shimon is the sole owner. Shimon is the sole owner. So now Ruvain can testify on Shimon's behalf because Ruvain is no longer an Ogea Badaver. Incredible. Come on, seriously. But still. Even if they do a Kenyan, still what good is it? The Gemara says, Hari ma'amida b'fnei balchovo. Rebbe will say, Ruvain is still an ogea b'dabar. Ruvain still has a vested interest in keeping this field in the possession of Ruvain. Why? Because Rebbe will say, literally, again, he puts it in front of his creditor. Now, now what does that mean? Take a look at the Rashbam once more. Last, first wide line. V'chi ikano miyado ma'ahavi, akati amay meyed, lahamir asada biyado, havi nogehu be'edus, zu dinechale shi asada biyada shutof, b'bnei shem ma'amida. So let's listen to this. Ruvain still has a vested interest. What's Ruvain's vested interest? We'll say, remember again, let's say, watch this. We're with the Shimon partners. They own a piece of property together. Now, what happened? Ruvain borrowed money. Ruvain borrowed money. So now, halacha lemaisa, when Ruvain borrowed money, either as an individual or as a partner, there's a lien against assets. Even if Ruvain goes ahead and divests himself of his ownership interest of the field, the lien is still there. The lien, the lien still exists, right? As such, Ruvain may have a vested interest in keeping this property with Shimon, so that should Ruvain not be able to go ahead and satisfy his debts, the lien on that property, that, that, that encumbered property, still remains in the hands of someone who Ruvain knows. So therefore, again, even though Ruvain has no active ownership interest in this, if there are pre-existing liens on this property, Ruvain would want it to stay with Shimon so that he knows where that property is should it be needed for collection, which means that Ruvain still has an interest in the testimony. Mm -hmm. And if Ruvain has an interest in the testimony, that would seem to invalidate him as a witness. Fascinating. So the Gemara says, the Gemara If someone sells a field to his friend without a guarantee, so it's without a guarantee means, right? I, I sell a field to Ruvain, I sell it with Adach Rais. So Adach Rais means that if one of my creditors comes and scoops up that field from Ruvain, Ruvain has no recourse against me. Then what's the halacha? Ein meyed lo aleha. I can't testify on Ruvain's behalf. Right? So as well said, let's say I sell a field to Ruvain, and then someone comes and questions Ruvain's ownership on that field, challenges his ownership on the field. And Ruvain says, Silver, can you come to Basin and testify on my behalf that you sold me the field? I can't testify on Ruvain's behalf. Why not? Because Rebel say, interestingly enough, as much as I did sell the field to Ruvain, I have a vested interest in that field remaining with Ruvain, somewhere where I know that it is, or with an owner that I know, because in the event that that, that, that field secures some pre-existing debt of mine, I have a vested interest in the field remaining with Ruvain. So the Gemara says, Ha'chama what's the case? The Kabbal alai achrayis. The case is where Ruvain accepted Achrayis, right? So I'll say, so now this is getting very complicated over here, right? So Ruvain and Shimon were partners. So now just to play this all out over here. So what's happened? So first of all, Ruvain has gone over to Shimon and he says, Shimon, I'm not involved in this field anymore, right? I have nothing to do with the field. The other is Sulekas, him and didn't the Isaac buy nothing to do with it. He, he, but he, but he, he bolstered that with the Kenyan. So now he's really relinquished ownership. I, but the Gemara says, still, how could Ruvain testify on behalf of Shimon? He's still a Nogeb Adavar. He still has a vested interest in it. Because again, in terms of being a source of, of repayment for debt. What's the case over here? The case over here is Ruvain accepted upon himself Achrayis. So Gemara says, Achrayis demand. Responsibility for what? If it's ultimately, again, achrayis for any creditor that may come from the world, then all the more so that Reuven wants that property to remain in the possession of Shimon Ella. Achrayis ta'asile machmas. No, no, no. What Reuven accepts is as follows. Reuven says to Shimon, Shimon, listen. Anyone, in other words, here's what we're doing over here. Number Step one, I'm getting out of this partnership, right? Step two, we're bolstering my partnership removal with a Kenyan or my partnership exit with the Kenyans. Now, you're, you're the full owner, you're the full owner. I, what about the fact that this land may be mortgaged, right, for pre-existing debts that I, Ruvain, may have? Shimon, I'm guaranteeing it. 
if anyone comes and seizes the property from you in satisfaction of my debt, of Ruvain's debt, I agree to make you whole. So I'll say, in a case like that, when you put all of those ingredients together, then we're suggesting that halacha l'maysa, Ruvain could testify on behalf of Shimon that Shimon is the owner. Why? Because given all of those ingredients, Ruvain has no, he's not no gear bedaver. He no longer has a vested interest in Shimon keeping the property because Lemaisa, again, he's, we've, we've checked all the boxes, right? He's removed himself from the partnership, right? He's bolstered that removal with a Kenyan, and he has guaranteed Shimon that should the property be seized by any of his Ruvain's creditors, that Ruvain will make Shimon whole. In a case like that, when Ruvain shows up in Beisden, he has no longer any vested interest in this testimony, and therefore we're able to accept him. Beautiful. The Gemara says, one second. V'chi nafshe minei mi But one second. Let's go back for just a second. When Reuven removes himself, when Reuven removes himself, right, ultimately, again, from this partnership, right, is he really able to remove himself in totality? After all, the Gemara says, Mimis Lava Tanya, this is a very interesting case. B'nei ir, shenignaf sefer tor Listen to this. You have a city. You have a, you have, you have a town. And what happens? The town's sefer Torah was stolen. So the judges of that city can't adjudicate that case. Right? You have to bring in another Beisdin to adjudicate that case. And ultimately, again, the people of the town can't testify. Can't testify. They both say, now, why is this? Take a look at Rashi. The Rashi Ram says over here, Vatanya, Taimo Mishum de Ikala Mimar Kinyun Yohi, Do Avud Kedeshi Yoid Alav, Viami Denu Biado. They both say, here's what's interesting about this. What's, if, well, first I'll look at the rest of Rashi Ram. In Dunan, Agana Vu, Tony Lakati with Dun, Raya, Edim Shur Osha, Ningle, Osham Eden Shazel, Sevetisha Osair, Tekulon Shutfin, Vinogin Beidusan. So both say, so this is interesting. The Gemara now questions this entire premise of Ruvain going ahead and removing himself from Eidos, right? So I will say, so here's what's interesting. We've constructed now a scenario where Ruvain is removing himself from the partnership in totality and is creating a structure whereby he's able to testify on behalf of his former partner, Shimon, right? So he says, Dino Dharma, nothing to do with the field bolsters it with a Kenyan, and gives Achrayas, provides a guarantee, should the field be seized from Shimon, the satisfaction of Reuven's pre-existing debts. And all those things together, Reuven can testify on behalf of Shimon. So now we're saying Reuven rolls into Beisdin, testifies on behalf of Shimon. The Gemara says, aren't we concerned that maybe there's like a little bit of, what's the word over here, you know, crooked kite happening, Me- meaning, meaning what, meaning what, that Reuven's going to withdraw, come and give the testimony, and then what's going to happen the next day? Shimon is going to give him back his portion, right? In other words, th- this is an easily exploitable situation. After all, the Gemara says, let's take this other example, right? There's a town, right? Well, right, the, the town, the, safe, the town of the Sefer Torah was stolen. So the Gemara says, by the way, the Dayonim of that city, right, can't, the basin of that city can't go ahead and adjudicate the case. I will say now, right? And the people of the city can't be witnesses. Now, why not? Why not? Because I will say, the assumption, by the way, the way that, just so you understand, this is fascinating, the way that, you know, we have this concept sometimes of like Sefer Torah, that a Sefer Torah is donated by like a family, they give it to the shul, it's a long-term loan. Remember, the classic case of Sefer Torah is that Sefer Torah were owned by the community. So in other words, there was like a community tax, right? Everybody paid their portion for a Sefer Torah. So the Gemara says, why can't the judges of that city adjudicate the case? And why can't the townspeople give testimony? Why not? They're no gabadaver. They're no gabadaver. They all have a vested interest because they're all partners in this Sefer Torah. So the Gemara says, well, one second. Vim Isa, now if you're right, like you wanted to suggest before, like in the case of Reuben and Shimon, that Reuben could just pull out of the partnership, then I don't understand. Vim Isa, Lesalku, Beit Tremenai, Vladainu. So I have a great idea. I have a great idea. Just take, so in other words, if this concept, if this ability, to just simply withdraw fully and totally from the partnership is really possible. If that's really possible, then just like we're saying by Ruvain over here, then let two of the townspeople withdraw from their partnership in the Sefer Torah. Right, so let's go ahead and say like this. Let three of the Dayanim withdraw. Say we relinquish our chilek in the Sefer Torah and let them make a kinyan and everything else, right? Let two guys, two witnesses relinquish their portion of the Sefer Torah and let them become them, let them become witnesses. Easy enough. Easy enough. 
To which the Gemara says, shiny Sefer Torah, Dilashmiya Kai. We will say it's different. It's different because you can't really relinquish your ownership in the Sefer Torah. How does ownership in a Sefer Torah, how does ownership in a Sefer Torah manifest itself? Or also, what does that ownership give you? That ownership gives you the privilege of hearing the reading of the Torah, Mondays, Thursdays, Shabbos morning, and Shabbos by Mincha. So what are you going to do when you relinquish that? You're not going to listen? You're not going to listen? You're going to tune out? So Rashbam says, the only way to really, this is incredible, the only way to really relinquish your portion of that Sefer Torah is to move somewhere else. <laughs> okay, so if you move to another town, you're not going to, so what the Gemara essentially says is, it is not possible to relinquish your portion in Torah. I will say, what a beautifully life-affirming lesson. No matter what you do, you can't get away from Torah. No matter what you do, you can't relinquish your portion of Torah. And I will say, on Shabbos afternoon, we have our uh, Yalkut Yosef Chabura, which is no longer learning Yalkut Yosef. It's learning Rabban Hilchos Shuva, which is great. So we just started Hilchos Shuva this past Shabbos. And I will say, pointed out that the, the Lashon of the Rambam, in Parak Aleph, Mishnah Aleph, Halacha Aleph, in Hilchos Shuva, is the Rambam says, interesting idea, the Rambam talks about you have to do a tshuva, you have to do tshuva whether you violate an assay, a positive commandment, a prohibition, and the Lashon of the Rambam is, Kishe Ya'as tshuva, when you do tshuva. And I pointed out that Rabbi Soloveitchik, Zechat Sadiq Chalash Lebracha, brings down, he says, why does the Rambam say, Kishi Ya'as tshuva, when you do tshuva? The Rambam should say what? Im Ya'as tshuva, if you do tshuva. So the Rav said so beautifully, he says, the Rambam understood, everyone does tshuva. Everyone does tshuva. It's not an im, it's not an in, it's a ki. It's not if, it's when. It's when. There is no such thing as a yid who doesn't come back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There is no such thing as a Jew who doesn't return to his source. There is no such thing as a person who doesn't reconcile with Avinu Shabbat Shamaim. Torah is a part of us. Torah is embedded within us. Our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is part of our DNA. Do we stray? Uh, every day. Right? right? Do, we lose our, do we lose our way? Uh, absolutely, all the time. But Lamaisa, it is impossible, it is impossible to go ahead and fully disconnect and disassociate with Torah. Everyone comes back in some way, some form, at some time. It's such a, such a beautiful, so therefore the Rambam says, not in Yasa Tshuva, but Kishi Yasa Tshuva. So therefore the Gimhara says, you can't get away from Torah. You can't, what, what are you going to do? You're going to divest your ownership interest in the Torah? You can't do it. You can't do it. Even if you, and by the way, if you move to another town, so okay, you're, you're away from this Torah, but you're still going to be a part of that Torah. It's incredible. So Tashma, Homer Tnuman Libni, Homer Tnuman Libni, Libni Iri, supposed to say, a guy says, give a money to the residents of my town, right? So Ruben says, Ruben is a generous guy. He wants to give a money to the, the, his townsfolk. So I'll say, so now let's say there's some type of dispute. Hey, what do they say? No good deed goes unpunished, right? So Ruben says, I want to make a big donation to the, to the community. And now what happens? So there's a, there's a Din Torah. There's a Din Torah. He says he made it. They say he didn't make it. Okay, what's the halacha? Ain't done a badana osayir. So again, the dayanim, the, the judges of that city, can't go ahead and can't go and adjudicate the case. And the residents of that city can't serve as edim. But am I? Why not? Now, again, I understand why not. Why not? Why not? There are no Gebedavar. Because remember, again, those very witnesses and those very judges are the beneficiaries of Reuben's generosity. So they're not allowed to therefore adjudicate and they're not allowed to testify. But am I? The Salku Bey train of Shaivaladainu. So go ahead and just, well, I understand. Why, if it works by Reuben, like we said before, that Reuben could just totally withdraw from the partnership, then let three of the Dayan and two of the witnesses fully withdraw from the beneficiary from being the beneficiaries of this gift. They, we will not benefit from this gift that Reuben is making to the community. Let them be impartial. Let them testify and adjudicate. To which says, no, 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 no. What, what is Reuben what is Ruben donating over here? Reuben is donating a Sefer Torah. So now we come back, you can't really withdraw from the benefit of a Sefer Torah unless, of course, you move to another town and no one is ready to move. So Tashma, Homer Tnu Manala Aniye Iri, Another interesting case. Ruvain says, I want to give money to the poor of my town. He wants to make a donation to the poor. So we'll say now, again, there's some type of machlokes about the donation. So what's talacha? 
Ain Dunim Bidayane Osair. Ultimately, again, that case cannot be adjudicated with the judges of that city. Vein Mavin Raya Me Anshe Osair. And the residents of the city can't provide testimony. I, the Gemara says, one second. Now, Bosa, now this case is even a little bit more problematic. Why? Because unlike the previous case, which was a gift to the entire city, this is Dafka gift to the poor. Sadan Sam Batizbara. Aniyam Shakli Dayani Mifsili. So I don't understand. Because the poor get a gift, so the judges who are not poor necessarily are disqualified. I don't understand. Ela Ema, Ain Danim Bedayane Osahair, Ve Ain Mavian Raya Me Aniyah Osahair. Ah, so the Gemara says, You're right, you're right. What it means is like this. If there are judges who are poor, or some of the witnesses who are poor, those people can't adjudicate and can't testify in the case, because they're no gay bedavar. Again, the Gemara says, Va'amai, listalku beitrei, nafshayu, filadinu. So the Gemara says, I don't understand. Once again, it will say, the whole point, the whole, the whole chap that we started out with the shutfus case over here in today's daf, was to teach us that what? That a shutaf can fully withdraw from a partnership to the point that he can even become a, a um, what's the word, a, an impartial witness. So once you have that mechanism, why can't you employ it over here as well? So let two of the Aniyim, let two of the Aniyim say, you know what, or I should say five of the Aniyim, right? Three witnesses, sorry, sorry, three judges and two witnesses, let them, let them remove themselves. We will not receive benefit from this gracious tzedakah gift that Ruvain gave, and that way, again, we're impartial, and we can testify, testify and adjudicate. To which the Gemara says, no, 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 hachanami, the sefer Torah. What does it mean when it says that Ruvain is going ahead and giving a gift, giving a gift of, uh, to the poor? It means, the poor in this case means all the townspeople. What's the gift? The gift is a sefer Torah. Why are you calling the gift of a Torah a gift to the poor? So I will say, so now you essentially you're calling all of the townspeople Aniyim. Why are you calling all of them Aniyim? Because everyone is considered to be impoverished and Ani when it comes to a Sefer Torah. Now, now what does that mean? Take a look at the Rashbam. Five, six lines up from the bottom. Da call Eitzel Sefer Torah Aniyim Heim. Shekulam Tzrichenlo. Everyone needs a Torah. So here's what's interesting. A Sefer Torah, a Sefer Torah is one of those things that everyone needs, but yet not everyone has. So because of that, often people, when it comes to a Sefer Torah, are called an Ani. Now this can be understood on, 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 a, on a couple of different ways. So there happens to be a lot of literature on this particular Gemara over here about the mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah. There is a mitzvah da'araisa for every Jew to write a Sefer Torah. Now, that's a pretty big undertaking. A pretty big undertaking. So how does one fulfill that mitzvah? There's a, so there's a lot of halachic literature about this. Maybe purchasing a letter is enough to fulfill the mitzvah. Doing it, doing it in partnership. Having svarim in your home, maybe that's enough. So there's a whole... The point over here is that the mitzvah of, the mitzvah of writing a Sefer Torah is a big mitzvah. Everybody is obligated in it. Not everybody is able to do it. So therefore, again, it's, we call the townspeople aniyim. Everyone's considered to be quote-unquote poor. What does it mean if you're poor? Right? Poverty means there's something that I'm lacking. So so too the Gemara says everyone is considered to be an ani by a Sefer Torah because everyone needs to have one, but not everyone has them, has one. And therefore, again, Ruvain, in his conveyance of the Sefer Torah, is giving the towns, the townspeople are considered poor, they don't have a Torah. Ruvain is giving them this gift of a Sefer Torah. Good. And also, there's also a beautiful, this is I think just like a beautiful message embedded in that, embedded in that phrase as well, that Eitzel Sefer, the Hakol Eitzel Sefer Torah Ani Imheim. They're both saying, Everyone is considered to be poor when it comes to a Sefer Torah. What does that mean? You know, I'll say one of the most humbling things in learning is that no matter how much I learn, it's like a tipa shibatipin. It's a drop of a drop in the ocean of Torah. You know, on one hand, on one hand, when you learn, you feel such a profound feeling of accomplishment, right? Especially Baruch Hashem, those of us who have the schuss to learn the daf together, we are, we are mamish, like this is a marathon through Shas. I know it doesn't feel like a marathon, it's a seven and a half year marathon. This is distance running, right? This is distance running, right? But Lamaisa, it is, like we get through Shas in ways that no one ever thought was possible. There is a profound sense of accomplishment, but yet at the same time, learning is a very humbling experience, a very humbling experience, because for everything that I know, I, know, I realize that there's so much that I don't know. There's so much that I haven't even 
touched. There is so much that I haven't even begun to explore. In other words, isn't it overwhelming to think there are svarim that I haven't even opened up yet? Right? Svarim that I haven't even, I'm not a young person, right? Svarim that I haven't, I haven't even like, like cracked it open yet. You would think at this point, all right, at least you've seen everything. No. So perhaps what the Gemara is teaching us is, the hakol eitz osir for Torah and the inhaim. When I, you know, when I, when, I, when I measure myself up against Torah, I measure myself up against the Sefer Torah, I feel very impoverished, right? I feel like a pauper. That as much as I've done, as much as I've done, I realize that there's so much more, so much more that I haven't done. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes just like the pauper realizes that, you know what, perhaps if he works hard enough, he could change his financial circumstances. If he works hard enough, maybe even a couple of jobs, you know, he could turn things around. So when I stand next to Toda, I might feel like a pauper. But the good news is, if I get my act together and I push myself a little bit more and recognize, no, it's not just enough to learn in the mornings, I have to learn in the evenings also, and I have to push myself and I have to do, and it's not just enough to do daf yomi, maybe I have to take on Mishnah yomi, maybe I have to take on Hilcho Shabbos, maybe I have to take on Yerushalmi, maybe I have to take on a Chasidos, a Halacha Chabura, I have to take on a I have to take on so many different things. Again, I might, I might feel like a pauper. I might feel like a pauper right now. But just like the pauper has the ability to change his circumstances and to mirror such extricate himself from the clutches of poverty, even though when I stand next to my beautiful Torah, I feel a little bit insignificant and I feel like I don't measure up, okay, it's time for me to roll up my sleeves to do something about that feeling, to extricate myself from the clutches of spiritual poverty and to make myself into something great. The other possibility is the Olam Kedikhtani. Maybe not, maybe not. Maybe it's as we said before, that Reuven is giving over a gift, and he's Mamish giving over a gift of tzedakah. Tzedakah, the Gemara says, And we're talking about cases of Yerabosai of where the community has an obligation to support the Aniyim. So I'll we'll say, so now that makes a little bit more sense. Reuven is giving a gift to tzedakah. Reuven is giving it to tzedakah. So I'll we'll say, Aye, so why is it that the townspeople can't adjudicate that case or can't testify? Why did say? Because we're talking about a situation where in the town everyone has an obligation to pay a tzedakah tax. So here's the good news. What's the good news? If Reuven goes ahead and makes a nice donation to the Aniyim, then what does that do? What does that do? That frees up the rest of the town people, townspeople, from having to pay. So if that's the case, everyone is a nogea. Everyone, everyone is. There's a better word for nogea than a conflict of interest. What am I, what am I missing? What is it? Not a bias. Um, what? What? Okay, no gay, we're just going to go on no gay. A, ve- is a vested interest, a vested interest is, but I feel like there's a better English word for it. Okay, he's, he has, he's a no gay, but he has a vested interest in, in seeing the testimony go a certain way. So now in this case, even though Reuben is going ahead and giving and giving and giving a gift to the Aniyim, but that gift to the Aniyim benefits everyone else. That's why, that's why the townspeople can't adjudicate it, can't give testimony for it. I think we're well, what's the case? Hey, he dummy. Edi Kitzlu. So I'll say, if we're talking about a case where in the town there was a a defined tax. Everyone paid a certain amount into the tzedakah fund. Then leisu be treminayu, my dikits lu, filadainu. Then we'll say, so let's say again, let's say for argument's sake, in this town, everybody paid $100 a year towards the tzedakah tax. Okay, so there's an easy way to remedy this. Let five guys, three witnesses, three, three judges and two witnesses say, you know what, we're going to pay our tax regardless. Regardless of Ruvain's gift, we're going to pay our tax. That should make them impartial, and therefore they should be able to adjudicate and judge the case. How come I ask? the low kids the case is where no, there's not a set tax. The Gemara says, no, 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 this isn't even really a function, ultimately, again, of paying. In other words, you're right, you're right. Let's say everybody pays, everybody pays $100 a year into the tzedakah fund. Okay, so now you're going to say, Ruben's coming along and Ruben's saying, I'm giving a million dollars to tzedakah. This is incredible. Now I'm not going to have to pay my $100 a year. See, even if I could say, you know what, I'll pay my $100 a year, and that makes me impartial. It still doesn't make me impartial. Why not? Because as a resident of the town, it is benef- beneficial for me to know that there's a surplus in the tzedakah coffers. In other words, 
even if I myself pay my way, pay my portion, so therefore again, I'm not benefiting financially from Ruven's gift, there is still a benefit as a resident of the city knowing that the tzedakah coffers are overflowing. Halavai, halavai. Right, so it says, therefore again, I'm not impartial, and because I'm not impartial, therefore I can't go ahead and give edos. Incredible, incredible. And I'll say, so again, what's the takeaway from here? The takeaway from here is, remember again, I'll say, how do we get into this? You're like, I have no idea. I'm asking myself that question for years. Right? How did I get into this? And I'll say, so, so the nice thing, again, remember, the way we got into this is because, just to follow, follow the train of thought, we said a shutaf can't establish chazaka. Right? A partner can't establish chazaka. Once we started talking about partners, the Gemara had a brace, and the brace said that partners could testify for each other. The Gemara said, huh? Partners could testify for each other? They're no gay right? They have, they, have a, right? They, they have a vested interest. So therefore, again, they're, they're biased. They're biased. Right? We'll just use it, right? They're biased. And therefore, again, can't, can't testify. So the Gemara tried to come up with a case of where a partner could testify in his death. So how did he do that? Number one, he withdrew from the partnership, backed up that withdrawal, ultimately, again, with a Kenyan, and Number three, made a personal guarantee to the partner, to, to right, Ruvi made a personal guarantee to Shimon that should the, should the former partnership property be seized in satisfaction of any Ruvain's pre-existing debt, Ruvain will make Shimon whole. That's where he could withdraw from the partnership, and therefore once he does that, he has no vested interest in anything, Ruvain could testify on behalf of Shimon. The Gemara then just took that, just took that, and tried to apply it to other cases. Good, that's the whole sogyo. Right there. Nas and Shomer Sachar Zelazeh. Furthermore, still a partnership, I will say. Partners become a Shomer Sachar one for the other. One for the other, right? So when Ruben goes ahead, when Ruben goes ahead and when, when Ruben goes ahead, um, when Ruben goes ahead and watches some, right? This in this case, Ruben and Shimon are active partners. So Ruben watches something for Shimon. Shimon watches something for Ruben. They are considered to be Shomer Sacher. And I'll say, what's the ramification of being a Shomer Sacher? Shomer Sacher is chayiv for Gneva va'aveda. If the object you're watching is stolen or is lost, you are chayif. The Gemara says, one second, Amad Beis, Amad Beis, Amai, Shmir Babaylami. All right, I will say a little bit of a blast from the past over here. Bab Metziah days. I will say, remember again, we learned this, that the, there's a p'tur, there's a p'tur of Ba'al of Imo. Now this p'tur, this p'tur ultimately again, this exemption is really written by Shoal, right? And normally if you borrow something from someone, so the whole chaf of a Shoal is, remember again, I will say the way it works with liability is, the greater the benefit, the greater the liability. So a Shoal has full use of an object, the borrower. Now, the one thing the Torah says is, if I borrow something from Ruvain, and the owner is with me, Baal of Imo, then I'm potter. So remember what I was saying in the Gemara, we, we redefine what does Baal of Imo mean? Baal of Imo means that the owner of the object is employed by me at the time I borrow his object. If that's the case, then I'm exempt from any liability. So the Gemara says, now we extended that not just to Shol, but to all other cases of Shomer as well. So the Gemara says, this should be a case of Baal of Imo. Why? Because, right, Ruvain and Shimon are partners. So now, as partners, kind of Ruvain is in the employ of Shimon, and Shimon is in the employ of Ruvain. That's the nature of partnership. They kind of both, both work with each other and for each other. If that's the case, then there should never be any liability for anything that happens to the object that either of them are watching, because it should be Balavimo. No, no, no. The nature of their relationship was that there was never any simultaneity. Rather, again, Ruben would say to Shimon, Shimon, you know, you work for me today. Essentially, you watch the object today. I'll watch an object tomorrow. So because there was never sim any simultaneity, at the time that Ruben was working for Shimon, Shimon was not working for Ruben. At the time that Shimon was working for Ruben, Ruben was not working for Shimon. So because of that, again, there was no Torah Baal of Imo, and therefore they are our Shomer Sokha, one for the other. Beautiful, beautiful. We'll say 43B, third line down. Turn up on on. Machalo bayis, machalo sada, ein meyed aleha, mevei shach la So we'll say, now watch this. If I sell to Ruvain, I sell to Ruvain a home, or I sell to him a field, I cannot test this. Now, let's say Ruben is the owner, and let's say Ruben's ownership is contested. So Ruben says, Silver, can you come to Beisdin for me and testify on my behalf that you sold me the field? So the halacha is, I cannot. I, I as the seller, am not believed to be, a, to, be a, to be a witness. Why? For the very simple reason, I will say, because I, I, I have a vested interest in this. Why well, I have a vested interest in this? Because I will say, if it turns out that the field is taken away from Ruben, guess who Ruben's coming back to? Who's he coming back to? Coming back to me, because I sold them the field. I sold them the field, right? And therefore, I have achrayis for the sale. And therefore, Allah says again, I can't walk into Bezin and give testimony on behalf of Ruvain because I have a vested interest in the field remaining with Ruvain. However, machalo para machalo talis, but if I sold Ruvain a cow or I sold him a talis, may it law and again, now his ownership is contested. I can't.
can testify on his behalf. Why? Because I don't have achrayis for it. I don't have any, any responsibility. In other words, if Reuven loses the cow, Reuven loses, or in other words, if the cow or the, or the, or the cloak is seized from Reuven, Reuven has no recourse against me. So the Gemara says, okay, well, let's analyze this. Why is this Maishna ratio, Maishna safer? Now, both say, it's almost as if the Gemara takes it for granted that with real estate, there's a chrayis, there's responsibility, the seller has responsibility, replacement responsibility, should something happen to the object because of the seller, or just should something happen to it, right? And yet, in the case of movable property, the talis or the para, that there is no achrayis. So the Gemara says, I don't understand, where, why, how do you know to make that distinction? Maishna reisha, maishna seifa. Amar Rav Sheish says, reisha beruvein shegavach. So we'll say, okay, so now, Kamar Rav Sheish says, okay, here we go. This is a bit more complicated than we originally thought. It always is. So I will say, watch this, here it is. Ruvain shegazel sadam shimon. This is a great case. Ruvain stole a field from Shimon. Umachra levi, and he sold it to Levi. Right. So Ruvain thief steals it from Shimon, sells it to Levi. Va'asi Yehuda v'kama arer ale. Now let's see. Now watch this. Now Yehuda shows up, and Yehuda shows up, and he says, "By the way, the field is mine." Right, the field, the field is mine. Yehuda is saying that Ruvain was never even the owner, right? The field always belonged to me. So again, Ruvain, sorry, Ruvain steals from Shimon, sells it to Levi, and now Yehuda challenges Levi's ownership in Beisdin, saying the field belongs to me. The field never even belonged to Shimon, it's mine. Okay, so I'll say, so now, now here we go. Delo lazel Shimon la'asid le Levi. And I will say, so now we're suggesting Shimon can't testify on behalf of Levi. Now, I'll say, now remember again, who's Shimon? Who's Shimon? Shimon is the original owner. So Shimon can't testify on behalf of Levi that the field belongs to Levi. Why? Denecha le the Hadra. So we'll say ultimately again, because why? Because halacha lemaisa, it is Levi. Sorry, sorry. Shimon has a Shimon has a benefit ultimately again to Levi that the land that he wants the land to come back to him. But for now, he wants the land to remain with Levi. The chayven the asid le the Levi who hechi matzi mafik So we'll say so here's what's interesting. Okay, so let's play this out once more. Okay, Ruvain stole the fields from Shimon, sold it to Levi. Okay, Yehuda now comes to Beisdin and challenges Levi's ownership, Chlamithis. So now what we're saying is like this. Shimon, now remember who's Shimon, the original owner, can't come and testify on behalf of Levi that it belongs to Levi. Right, now let's say, now why would Shimon be coming to Beisdin testifying on behalf of Levi? Remember again, Shimon's the original owner, right? So why would Shimon be coming to testify on behalf of Levi? Because Shimon's got a plan. What's Shimon's plan? Shimon wants to get it back, right? She wants to get it back, but for now he wants it to remain in the hands of Levi and doesn't want it to go to Yehuda, right? Because again, I will say, remember again, if you're Shimon, if you're Shimon, the best way to make your case is you have to prove, right? You, you have one goal. What's your one goal if you're Shimon? To prove that Reuben is a thief. Because if you can prove that Reuben is a thief, then halach lamaisa, the sale to Levi, was an invalid sale, which means you'll get back your property. So now, sh- sh- so therefore the Gemara says we don't allow Shimon to come into Basin to testify on behalf of Levi, because Shimon has a vested interest in this Eidos. The Gemara says, one second. The Chayvan the Asid Le the Levi who Hechi Matsi Mafik Lemine. Let's say, let's say, if she, let's, let's play this out. If Shimon is showing up in Basin, right? And Shimon shows up in Basin, and Shimon says, by the way, I testify that the field belongs to Levi. So that's it. Shimon, in other words, say, how would Shimon be getting back to field later on? What is he going to do? He's going to come to Basin later on and say, no, it's not Levi's, it's mine. If he testified that it belongs to Levi, that's it. Essentially, does that not mean that he's relinquishing ownership? How would he ever get the field back later on? They all say, this is incredible. No, no, no. Da'amar, yedana da'hai ara da'lav di'yuhudihi. Very interesting. They all say, what's his edus? His edus is, which is interesting about whether or not such an edus like this would actually work, that Shimon rolls into Basin and Shimon says, here's my testimony. I know this field does not belong to Yehuda. That's what I know. So it's interesting. So what he's do, what Shimon's testimony would do is it would keep it out of the hands of Yehuda, keep it, but it's not firmly placing it in anyone else's hands. And if you're if you're Shimon, that's your goal. I want to keep it out of the hands of Yehuda without taking a side as to exactly who the owner is, right? And like this, it kind of keeps it in play a little bit. That's the testimony. So the Gemara says we don't believe Shimon for that testimony. Why not? Because he's no Gebedos. Right, because he has a vested interest in keeping it out of the hands of Yehuda. 
The Gemara says, one second. Ubahuza Husa de Kamathik Lemi Levi left Gimmi Yehuda. So we'll say, but one second. If Shimon's got a plan up his sleeve, right? Shimon clearly has a plan, right? Right? What, what's Shimon's plan about? Say, what's Shimon's plan? This is a, multi, this is a two part plan over here. Part one. Part one. Shabbat Mezdin. And keep the land out of the hands of Yehuda. Okay, that's part one. Then part two is what? Now that it's out of the hands of Yehuda, who does it remain with? Who does it remain with? Levi. Part two of the plan is then clearly to extract it from the hands of, of Levi. So. The Gemara says, so Ruvain, whatever mechanism you're going to use to go ahead and get the field out of the hands of Levi, just play that card now. Just play that card now. To which the Gemara says, well, who's the who's the Kamafik Levi Levi left Kim Yehuda? So let the field go to Yehuda. Let the field go to Yehuda. Just leave it alone. And whatever you're going to use, whatever plan you have to extricate the field from to extricate the field from Levi, just use it for Yehuda. In other words, don't get involved in this case. Let the field go to Yehuda. Then show up in Beisdin and extricate the fields from Yehuda. To which the Gemara says, Da'amar hasheni noachli harisha kasha heimeno. So I'll say this is very interesting. Because Ruben says, listen, Levi is a much easier guy for me to deal with than Yehuda. So essentially he says, I'd rather go ahead and deal with Levi than Yehuda. So therefore he wants to keep it out of Yehuda's hands and go ahead and keep with Levi. You might say with other possibilities, go We'll stop over. We'll pick up with this e by seven tomorrow. We'll say, and I'm leaving a little bit of a cliffhanger over here. It was an incredible case. So the resolution of that case, the resolution of that case, and ultimately again how we pass in Emirat Hashem tomorrow. Wow, what a what a packed morning. What a packed morning. Shkoyach. Have a great day. All right, everyone. Have a great day, everyone.